so for the next few images, I'm kind of just going to go rapid fire, like a little bit of dodging and burning. So if you don't want to dodge and burn your entire image because of how meticulous it is, um, there are certain things that you can do relatively quick that can still really change your photo. So this photo in Yellowstone was taken a little bit after sunrise at Grand Prismatic. Um, and we got lucky that we were the only ones there. So Danny's in here. But if you look at this over here, the springs before you get to actual Grand Prismatic, um, a really rich orange and red almost up here kind of glowing. So I'm just going to accentuate that and probably if I wasn't going to be talking through it would spend 45 seconds to a minute doing this and it can really kind of amp up your photos rather than just kind of saturating it in the HSL which doesn't always look as clean. So I'm going to make a new dodge burn layer. bring up my color picker tool and I'm just going to pick this orange and I also want it to really shine so I'm going to bring it up just a touch I don't want it to be super super bright so I'm going to go there actually I'm going to go a little bit higher yeah that's good got B for brush down here and I'm going to change my opacity to 15% and now I'm just going to really go over this. And I'm going over this pretty rough, but I am grading it, it out for the darker parts. Actually gonna get up here as well. Oops. So the ground I can get away with kind of brushing more orange in, but since the the cloud and the springs are kind of blend, I'm actually gonna take a five percent brush and kind of brush up this orange color into the sky. You know, be a really cool effect. And come back down, maybe 10% brush now, and just really, really get this light part. And that was a few seconds worth of work. And look at the before and the after. So that really, really adds some depth to the image. All right, guys, so again, kind of just gonna rapid fire through this one as well. But this photo was taken at the Narrows in Zion National Park. And I really love taking photos of rapids like this. And the still rocks contrasting with this really silky flow of water, I think looks really good and complements really nicely together. So this water, it was very small rapids. That's why it's just very light. There's more rapids over here than here. But I really want to accentuate it and bring it out. So when you're doing dodging and burning, you can do a lot with water rapids like this and just really makes it pop so make a new dodge burn layer and for the color see where it brings up a little bit of a blue bring a little bit more of a turquoise color to it an aqua and I want this to be super bright and not that saturated so I'm gonna put it right there click OK and yeah 10% brush should be good I'm just going to start highlighting these rapids. In these general areas I'm going to hit too because even though there's not really rapids there, it's going to make the water look like it's just misting above and it's a really cool effect. So let's do a before, after. And I think it's a very subtle difference, but I think it's just such a nice 
addition to a photo. And I even think I might have gone a little light, so I'm going to do Command J to duplicate that. Let's see. Before, after. Maybe just this second one puts like 80% of passage, just so it's not too much. But now if we group these, Command G, before and after, and that was a really, really nice effect that we had just added. Alright guys, so here is one more image from the Narrows in Zion National Park. And what I want to show for this image is, as you can see, in the pool of water here where there's not any rapids, and a little bit up here, the water is super light hues of emerald, blue, aqua, and some just some really, really nice colors. So I want to accentuate that and make it look like almost as if these really cool silky rapids are going into just this crazy colored pool almost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a dodge burn layer. And again, most of these, some images I'll spend half an hour dodging and burning, some images I'll spend one to three minutes on and it can, it can change the entire photo. So, pick up my color picker tool in here, and I'm gonna kind of find a color I kind of like, like maybe, maybe around there. Let's see how that looks. Um, let's grab a brush. Let's do 15% opacity. Just see how it looks, and just kind of. That's too much, and it's also too green. Now, let's try that out. Make it more color in the middle, then have a gradient, gradient out towards the sides. Make sure it follows all of the water. You don't miss any spots, so it looks blended better. Just kind of going over that roughly. I'm going to do 5%. I'm going to do one pass over these lower rapids so it blends just better into that pool. And then even lower at like 3%. Give this layer before that. And now if we do before and after, it's a little heavy. So I'm going to go to maybe like 75% opacity, maybe even 60 But that just really changed this water down here and I think it looks really really awesome it just adds this kind of cool effect and also when you're dodging colors like this especially for water like the last image when you just go over water it adds like this misty haze almost above the water so it makes it look kind of just dreamy and it looks really awesome so one last before and after for this last image I'm going to kind of dodge and burn in a slightly different way so this image has been very minimally edited so far and it's because I think it was shot really well in camera. I was doing this hike early morning, maybe 6, 7 a.m. Um, so some of these areas are kind of dark because the light wasn't getting in there yet, but the light that did get in had this really, really nice orange and yellow glow to it. And since I did the long exposure, that's why the water's super still and super silky in the waterfall. So I think this was shot really well. Um, it doesn't need much editing, but I kind of want to accentuate the light that's coming in here and the light that is hitting the parts of the slot canyon. So what I'm going to do is just Command J to make a background layer. And I'm going to do what we did in the previous images with the dodging and burning. So let me get my colors to white and black. Now. What I'm going to do is with luminosity mask. So if you don't have luminosity mask, as I said in a previous chapter, you can download these at goodlight.us and I highly, highly recommend them for those that want to get into serious landscape photography. If you don't want to, they're not all that necessary. And as you guys saw in earlier images, you can do everything I've been doing without them, but they do come in handy for certain spots. So especially when we were light bleeding in the image um, with the rapids, when we did the light bleed, a lot of the, the shadows got really kind of dulled out. And we went back and we fixed them, but to avoid having to do that extra step, we're going to use a luminosity mask for this. So first, I'm going to get my color picker tool, pick a color of this light, I want more of a yellowish orange, 
I'm going to bring this up a little bit. And I'm just going to get about there. A little bit of saturation, but not much, and pretty bright. Now what I'm going to do is make my dodge burn layer. However, for the luminosity mask, I want Photoshop to be picking my selection from this layer, not from my dodge burn layer. So I'm going to have this layer highlighted. I'm going to hide that layer. Now, with my luminosity mask, I want something that will pick a lot of these highlights, but not touch any of the shadows. Um, I really just want to brighten up what's already getting some ambient light. So I'm just going to see which fits the best. This has a good selection, but I really want the shadows to be pure dark because when they're pure black and dark, um, it doesn't get touched by anything we do. So let's go up a step. That's a little bit better. That's a little too much because now all of these that I wanted ambient light kind of disappear. So I'm going to go with the lights too. I'm going to modify that with the levels and just kind of those darks really dark. Open up some of the midtones. See how these are coming through. I really like that. Um, don't. That's not really necessary. I really just want to darken the darks and then open up a little bit of the midtones so I can get light touching all of these areas. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to output this as a channel and call it ambient light areas. Click OK. And now in my channels, I can hey, this back. I want to load my ambient light layer areas by dragging it onto this square of selection lines and then come back to my layers and you can see all these selection lines to get to hide those so you don't have all that to look at just do command H they're still loaded they're just hidden and now we already have our color picked I'm gonna go to the brush tool and just to show you guys kind of the how awesome this luminosity mask I'm at a hundred percent opacity and I'm just gonna brush over this Just go over this very, very coarsely. Let's do a before and an after. Before, after. And it's a little bit much over in this area, but I don't think it's too much. So now it's, I really want to accentuate this back area with some more ambient light. And now let's do before, after, just really, really highlights this. To, so to show you kind of what we just did and what the luminosity mask offered, I'm going to hide these layers. And you can almost see a picture of what we had before. So everything you're seeing had highlights, lights, and upper midtones. And that's everything we had just painted over. And all of the areas that were shadows or dark are not painted over and that's exactly what we wanted. But since we still have our selection lines picked, we need to make sure to get rid of those. So I'm gonna do Command D. And nothing happens, but now your selection lines are deselected. Now I'm gonna make a layer mask and in the areas right here that I think just got a little too bright, I'm just gonna brush some of that back especially up in here when the sun was coming in directly. Now let's see our before, after. So you can just see this light just got really, really nicely touched. And that's a kind of cool way to dodge and burn with a luminosity mask. I'm going to just drop that a little bit.